Queen of Holes by CSR Chapter 7 The Highest Gamble of Your Life You're... I heard Marla's pathetically frail voice start to stutter. You're kidding me! Her voice boomed with anger that made my blood run cold. Nonetheless, I looked over at her with my suave grin, only to be greeted by her hostile and angry eyes. Darlene joined in with a fast-paced anger. Basil, what did you do? My foolish little brother then screamed out with his flowery voice from behind me. You miscreant scoundrel! I turned to look and saw that both he and the aloof older brother were starting to charge at me. Lady Furvis then said in her cold and domineering voice, Apprehend them. The servants immediately listened to their mistress's command and held the boys back. So, I started, could I get these dastardly things removed? I gestured to the shackles around my wrist. Oh, and can I get my due, please? And thank you very much, your oh-so-gracious and beautiful highness. Lady Fervis rolled her eyes and then directed her voice to her spoiled son. Boy, you know what to do. Cole took a moment after staring at me, and then came over to remove my chains. He then took a pouch of money out from his robes and tossed it at the ground before me. Don't worry, son, I don't bite. I tried to sound playful and not bothered by his confrontation with me. No need to avoid any form of contact. I could tell he thought himself much above me, and while he was disgusted by everything, I could tell that he was especially disgusted by me. Which of course he had no right to be, he is a sadist who gets off on hurting and destroying others in the most cruel and gruesome ways I had ever heard. He let out a growl-like noise as he made a gesture to a servant behind me. The servant moved closer, but neither said nor did anything. Lewin started up again. How could you do this? To your own family, too? Don't be silly, little brother. No harm shall come to any of you as long as you, or more of she, I gestured to Marla, gives Lady Fervis what she wants. Big deal. That's all Marla has to do. Then you can all go home happy. Jarvis then rambled aloud. You double-crossing, backstabbing, moronic, pathetic, little good-for-nothing sleazeball. I was surprised that someone so small had so much breath in him to say that much in one go. You know nothing. You are the biggest, most brainless reprobate I have ever known. I am ashamed to share your blood. Boulder's Pit, I am ashamed to even share this planet with you. Don't be so dramatic, you hypocrite. Everyone has his or her prize. I'm sure you'd betray not only Lewin or me, but the world for the right one. I gestured to Marla, who was shivering in place. Aren't I right, baby doll? I looked at her, this time directing the question at her. She stared back at me. Things aren't all that bad right now. Everyone is just making it out to be worse than it really is. All you need to do is what Lady Fervus asks. I promise. Damn him. And damn me for trusting this idiot. How could I be such a fool? I followed him right to Death's door. The Queen of Nightmares, Fervus as they called her, reeked of death and pain. The essence of her body was stained with it. She too had hypnotic and hollow eyes like her son, but only they were blood red instead of a golden orange. She had two sets of brows, one being smaller than usual, while the other being relatively a normal size. Her lips were wrinkled by what looked like old age or the mimicry of a skull. Her cheeks curved in, looking very concave and thin. Her throat was slit down the center vertically, as though someone tried to scoop out her larynx, but something told me this wound was self-inflicted. Her waist was long, but so tiny it was almost non-existent. Something I found very disturbing were the constant of her dress. It almost seemed like it was stitched together by skin of others. 
containing their screaming, daunting souls inside her clothes. She had bright pink hair that was almost the color of bubblegum and baby pink skin, which really contrasted with all the horror she had to offer. But above all, the thing I found most disturbing was the fact that she was still so beautiful despite all the haunting things that she was made of. I knew that I had entered something worse than I ever had in the past, and I needed to think this through carefully and quickly. I turned to the traitor's bastard Barcel. He looked very top-heavy of his muscular torso, which strangely conflicted with his pretty face and incredibly scrawny legs. His hair was wavy and long, a dark color just like Lewin, with a tint of a purplish maroon instead. I said, I have no possible way of finding it in me to agree with you. Just get out of here before I bring your neck myself with these chains. You're not needed. He took a step back, looking as though he was the one betrayed. I can't believe someone would sell their own family, blood or not. I shook my head. Well, he began again. Damage is done and can't be changed, Dollface. The sooner you give Lady Fervus. Don't what you, you understand? I can't! I barked at him. Oh, but you must. Fervus said in a very chilling voice that made all my bones shake and quiver in fear. The lives of your companions depend upon it.